Welcome, everyone, to the Rider Happy Hour. My name is Peter Klein. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, coming up on the program as we... Uh, adjust the camera. Uh, coming up on the program today, we look back at a dramatic win last week for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Uh, before we get ready for this week's game for the Riders, also against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Plus, we'll look at the injury report and a whole lot more. So remember to follow me on social media, remember to like and subscribe, and let's get to it. Um, okay, so the drama last week, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders with a dramatic victory over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And this has been something in the brief time that we have had Trevor Harris in our lives as Rider fans, um, that this is something that has really impressed me when it comes down to winning time. He just makes the right plays, it seems, all the time. And there is, not that the other guys on the field aren't competitive, or the other quarterbacks that the Riders have had aren't competitive, but he can match it with a competitive talent. And that is something that the Riders, I, I think, were lacking, specifically when he went down with an, uh, an injury a season ago. It's this, like, okay, guys, we're not losing tonight. These are the plays that we need to do. And he was excellent in that. He picked apart the defense late and was able to help the Riders set up a win. Now, maybe a little fortunate that Tim White can't catch, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, in terms of players who, uh, players who could catch, the Riders have a bunch of them. Um, Stearns, once again, Excellent. Drive extending plays. Second and medium to long. Stearns is your guy. He's worked his way up to, uh, I believe, top three in the CFL or uh, something along those lines. At least he was uh, before Montreal happened yesterday against Ottawa. But um, Stearns, I, I thought, was tremendous. Um, Emelis well, was much more a part of things, as was Keenan Schaefer-Baker as well. And then Bain was looking dangerous before he goes down with an injury. Now, I am uh, recording this here as a bit before uh, injury reports come out. So I just want to see if there is an update on him for today. There isn't. We'll get to the injury report here in a little bit. But I, I think for this rider team, um, I just like this group a lot. And I feel like Harris is working it around to them very effectively. Like you, you have a couple of guys who can take the top off. You have a couple of guys who can rely on in the underneath passes. That They are just... Um, uh, Peter Labardi is out here in Calgary, talks about it on the receiving, uh, for, uh, for, for hockey teams, they slot well, or they stack up well, that they just have everyone who fills the different needs that you have out on the football field right now. And it is, it's quite something. It really, really is something what's happening here in Saskatchewan and Harris being able to spread it around to him is great. And there's another addition. Um, Aju Aju came out as he had to check in for his first regular season game um, when Bain went down with an injury. And I thought he looked good. I liked what I, what I saw. Um, he, he's not, I don't think at a point where I think he is usurping any of the top four or anything like that. But if one or two of them go down with an injury, you are fine putting him in a number of different roles. Um, he's obviously a big target. He can get moving and he seemed to have some pretty good hands to be a reliable pass catcher as well. So I think there's a lot to like about his game and, and a lot to be excited about from a Saskatchewan standpoint. He is a fantastic depth option if something does go a little bit haywire. Um, other notes from this game, I thought the offensive line stepped up. There had been some issues throughout the game, but late, Harris was able to spread the ball around and he had time to do so. Um, they still aren't giving Ouellette a whole lot of room to work with. That definitely continues to be a problem. But one thing that really was was a problem in this game was the defense. They, they just simply weren't good enough. And they, they do come up with a big interception late, but throughout that game, they just, they, they, they got picked apart by Bo Levi Mitchell. And this was something we kind of targeted at the beginning of the season. They aren't getting enough pressure on the quarterback. They aren't covering very well either. And that, you need one of those. Uh, to, to, they, they tackle really well. Um, but to stop the other team from getting the ball before you tackle them would, I would say, be beneficial. And they're not doing that so far. Um, so I, I think this defense really does need to step up a, as this goes on. Too many easy passes for Bo Levi Mitchell and way too many easy completions on second and medium to long. The run defense was strong, again. And they got better as, as the day went on. They did a pretty good job late of turning Hamilton into a, a one-dimensional team. And the, the one upside I will give this defense, and I do think it shows up late, they rally to the ball so well. And this is something I talked about after week one, and we saw it again here in week two. They are swarming ball carriers and doing an excellent job of that. And that is why you see what happened with White, where he, he slides, it hits off of him, balls up in the air, defender right there. But it wasn't just one. There was a couple of guys who were in the area 
being able to, to make a play there. And so they've been able to avoid those big, oh, broken tackle, broken tackle, broken tackle plays. They've been able to limit those, and that has at, at least helped things out a little bit. But I, I would say the defense does need to be a whole lot better in that game. Um, another point, too, I forgot to, to mention on the swarming is when they, they had the fumble that they probably that they, they recovered, uh, but it gets turned back because Revis' helmet popped off. Um, they're swarming in that area as well, so just wanted to, to mention that. Overall, this team is doing the knows-how-to-win thing really well, and I, I do think that can be a little bit overused at times in the sporting world, but I do think in this case, it actually rings true. Um, you would like to see some times where they just knew how to win in the first quarter and were able to control it that way, but most teams lose that game, and for them to be able to battle back and come away with a W to be 2-0 now going into the home opener Sunday evening is just just awesome, man. <laughs> it, just, it really is. Uh, all right, let's get to the injury report. We talked about Sean Bain. Um, he goes down with an injury in the last game. He was limited in practice on Wednesday. Um, he was a full participant on Friday, so that is really good news. Um, I would imagine they're hoping for another full one today, see how everything was feeling. Uh, I'm recording this before the injury report comes out, so we will see uh, what, what happens with that. On the offensive line, um, Philip Lake went down in that game. Um, he is a DNP Wednesday and Thursday. Jamarcus Hardrick also a DNP Wednesday and Thursday. Now, admittedly, I haven't, I haven't looked at the, um, the, the injury report up until now, so I don't know if they have been resting him throughout the early parts of the week before. Um, also, Peter Godber, uh, for personal reasons, uh, a DNP. Also, um, AJ Ouellette here. Did not practice. That's what DMP stands for, sorry. Um, did not practice Thursday, or Wednesday and Thursday. So we will see about his status going into Sunday evening as well. So let's get into it. If Ouellette is playing, and we will assume health, the Riders need to get him going. Saskatchewan is last in the league in rushing by a wide margin. Um, and this area is really affecting the team on second down. We've talked before about Stearns being able to come out and extend drives with his catches. The... Problem is, he's needed to a lot. They, they, they've been in second and long. Saskatchewan is second last in the league in arver, uh, average, average gain on first down. That is, uh, I think, a real side effect of trying to get Ouellette going. He continues to run into pressure, run into pressure, run into pressure, and now all of a sudden, you have second and, uh, second and seven, second and eight, second and nine. You have these issues, and now you are having to, to make up with those. It's obvious passing situations, and you, you look at that Montreal defense. When it's obvious passing situations, you... Excuse me, quarterback's in trouble. Um, same thing against a team like Toronto. Um, I know I just listed two East teams, but uh, the West has teams who will do that as well. I, I would not want, well, Winnipeg is struggling. I would not want their defensive line to know that we have to pass the football uh, because they can just ears back and get after the quarterback. So to get out of those obvious situations, Saskatchewan, I think, really needs to get this thing going. It just put your put, puts your team in such a different hole. Um, if he can get going, it just makes life so much easier for, for this offense. And at this point, you either hope he gets better, utilize him differently, or just bail. Um, and I'm not saying you cut the guy or anything like that, but you start utilizing it differently. So the, the hope he gets better is you just keep feeding the guy the rock and you hope that things break down. And I understand their want to do it because you look at Derrick Henry in the NFL, obviously different sport, um, different version of the sport. You have a, an extra town to work with, but they just keep handing it to him, keep handing it to him, keep handing it to him. And now he, you know, generally gets more than one or two yards, but he is able to wear that defense down, and then by the fourth quarter, he is just running over fools. I think Saskatchewan was kind of hoping for the same thing with Ouellette, uh, and uh, so far it hasn't worked at all. We will see if they continue to do that. He is an effective pass catcher. That, that is something that I think they need to start utilizing, and I think that's a way to open it up a little bit more, is to kind of use the passing game also as the running game to try to get a little bit more success on first down to create second and manageable for this team. The other thing that really, really needs to get figured out are the penalties. I thought it was going to get a whole lot better after week one, and it went the exact opposite way. Again, it just makes life difficult on yourself when you only get two downs to be successful. And on one of them, you end up losing 15 yards because of a penalty or 10 yards because of a penalty. 
it sets you back. And the other, on the other hand, if your defense looks like it's coming off the field and then you just give them an extra 15 yards, offenses are too good to, to be doing that. So Saskatchewan desperately needs these penalties to, to stop it. And also special teams. They've had, I think, three really good special teams plays just wiped off the board. Can't keep happening absolutely not. If they fix this and the run game, then you won't have to have the big comeback, uh, come, comebacks, comebacks late. Uh, it, it just will, you will just be winning games and that will be great. The other thing we're watching for in this one, can Trevor Harris stay hot? I think that you, you trust him a little bit more on early downs, get things going. It gets him in a rhythm a little bit more. If you just do those hitch passes and uh, the hitch screen, sorry, um, little swing passes to, to Ouellette, it opens things up a little bit. You can do a bit of like a shoulder fake and then try to bump one up deep as well. It just opens things up and it just makes life so much easier. We've seen in the NFL, the, the trends where it's easier to pass on first down because defenses are in a more neutral state. Um, so it actually makes life easier on the quarterback. That's not to say you abandon the run entirely, but a lot of numbers show it is easier to pass on first down. So fucking pass on first down. Um, now that's the NFL again, D different things, but he has been so smart and effective with the ball this year. The other thing you're watching is which receiver steps up week one. It was Stearns and Bain week two. Uh, it was kind of everyone, uh, but Schaefer Baker had a big game. Um, MLS was really effective as well. Um, what happens here in week three? We will see. On the defensive side, there needs to be more pressure on Bo Levi Mitchell. He has been better than I thought he would be. And he has certainly looked mo more mobile than we've seen him look in years and years and years and years and years. Um, but the Riders aren't making life difficult on him, or at least they didn't last week. That has to change this week. That that was something I said was an X factor coming into the season, and I still believe it. They need, it feels like one more piece out there um, on the defensive side to get that pressure on the quarterback, and it's just, it's not good enough where it is right now, but I do think it'll get there. And I'm excited to see the fan reaction. This team is 2-0 and coming back home. It's a Sunday night. Um... The weather's supposed to be gorgeous, I think, from what I've seen. Um, at least the, where I'm living is supposed to be gorgeous. Uh, so hopefully we get a good turnout uh, out at Mosaic and get this, um, get things rolling. I do think Mace gets this done in the home opener, and I do think Saskatchewan wins relatively comfortably on home soil. So that is my breakdown for the Riders this week. If you want more CFL from me, I have started doing a kind of a, a predictions best bets piece for um, Three Down Nation. That is going to come out every week on Wednesdays. Um, so please check that out. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, it, it, it I, I put a lot of work into it and uh, I hope you guys like it. So that's where a lot of my CFL breakdown stuff is going to be. Also on the Couch Potato Diary podcast, um, wherever you are consuming this, there, there's going to be a lot of CFL talk throughout the season. So thank you all so much. Follow me on social media. I am at Primetime Klein and I'll talk to you guys next week right here on the Rider Happy Hour. I'm out.